Hey everyone, Mike here. I uh, I just want to kind of lay out how I came up with this uh, idea of a power spinner uh, for your for making your brushes. Um, I I'm typically a black coffee drinker. However, I do add, I have added sugar to it, and I'm wanting to get away from sugar, so I wanted to put some flavoring in it of some sort. So I I took I still have my black coffee and I added honey to it and cut back half on the sugar. So instead of a couple sugars, I would only put one in and a good help, helping of uh, honey. And then um, I, I wanted to cut all of my sugar out. So I cut back the sugar and got another substitute, which is, um, which is roasted marshmallow. It's a flavoring. This stuff is awesome if you like marshmallows. Um, and, uh, and I also use a, uh, creamer, and the creamer part is the key to what, how I came up with this idea on spinning the hook. And I don't know if any of you guys' what minds work the way mine does, but, um, you may know where I'm going with this. All right, so on, at a barista or a coffee shop where they're doing these fancy coffees, they take your, your creamer and they froth it up with, with a, a frother, what's called a frother. And so I uh, had bought one for my, for my morning coffee, but uh, I got to thinking, I only paid $9 for it. And then I got to thinking, well, I wonder if they have many cheaper, and they did. So I found this one here, and it's, it says, make your barista uh, jealous, okay? Well, this thing might make some of the uh, some of the guys that do brush making jealous, and they use their drill. Everybody's you know has not everybody. I've sold quite a few, a couple dozen of those uh, ultimate brush makers, and I'll continue to sell them because actually they are the ultimate brush maker because they 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 would be more for a um, for a production purpose than than uh, than one offs that we're going to be doing here. Uh, and I'm not going to tie a fly, but I'm just going to go over this, this um, frother. So we're going to go ahead and do an open box with the frother. And I'll pull it out. And, and um, in case you didn't know what a frother is, if I can get a hold of it in there. This, that'll do. This is a frother, okay? And it's got two, this one has two speeds on it. And it just takes... Uh, two AA batteries, so we'll go ahead and stick the batteries in. Make sure that, it, that you're putting them in um, in the right order. Uh, it's a DC battery, so if you reverse the order, the only thing that's going to happen is the motor is going to run backwards. It's no real big deal. Um, but there you go. Now we've got the batteries in, and we have ourselves a frother. And there, there's. There's low speed, or that's high, that's low speed, that's high speed, low speed, high speed. Okay, so this right here is not going to work. This little spring that they have uh, incorporated in the end of this shaft is what does the frothing on the, uh, on the creamer, on the creamer. So what we're going to do, oh, and I spent nine, almost ten bucks on the one I used in the house, but it's, it's got a, a, an odd shape here on the bottom and you can't stand it up. This one here you'll be able to put on your desk and it will stand on its own. And this is made out of a, a, a hard aluminum casing which makes it even better. It's heavier. It's probably twice, maybe a little more than twice as heavy as my other frother in the house. But this is not going to be a frother. This is going to be a power, a power uh, dubbing spinner. Okay? So what are we going to have to do? Well, first thing we're going to have to do is cut off this end here. So we'll pay, pay, take a pair of side cutters, and I think we should be able to cut them with this. Is we'll take the side cutters and we'll, we'll cut this off right here. Okay. Now I've just ruined my frother, okay? But we, what we're going to be able to do is take the frother and make it a, um, a dubbing spinner. But now with the uh, side cutters, this became a little bit um, 
uh, sharp on the edge, and we want to take that sharpness off. And what I'll do is I'll take it over to my over to my uh, grinder, my my sanding belt grinder, and and take that down to uh, a uh, less of a, a a knife sharp edge there. Okay, so um, I don't think you're going to be able to really see it that well, but it took I took the point off from the uh, from from the side cutters. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a hook bend on this uh, shaft. So let's just use a regular old pair of pliers and we'll put our bend in that way. So we'll take it and just put a little bit of a bend in it. <clears throat> there we go. So we've got that bend there. Now we need to get this bend, well this this here, let's see if we can get it down just a little bit further. I'm going to play around with this and see if I can get it down just a little bit further. Yeah, I think that's going to have to do. And then, let's see. Okay, here's the problem. If you look at this, the it's off about of a, a quarter of an inch. We need to bring this curve right here down so it's in line with this shaft. And to do that, I'm just going to grab a hold of it up up into the, up into the bend, and then just give it another little bend like this, and that should. It did. It put it put this curve right here, right in line with this. Now I, I don't think I can bend the um, bend that shut anymore. I can give it a shot here. Oh, it did. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so there we go. And I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but this this point inside of the shaft is now in line with the shaft. Um, as you might be able to see there. I'm hoping you can see it. Um, if not, well, I'll cut that out. And now what we have is the, um, is the uh, brush table that mounts to the shaft of my Renzetti vise. And the problem with this design is it's just going to work on the Renzetti vise or any 3 8 of an inch um, shaft that holds your vise up in the air off of your, uh, off of your plate. So, uh, I mean, if there's any manufacturers out there that see this and they want me to design one that fits their vise, I'd be more than happy to do that, uh, but I'll need a vise, so you can kind of figure out what that means. Uh, so let's go ahead and put some thread on here and I'm not going to make a fly but what I'm going to do is I'm going to I, I am going to uh, spin me some spin me some material to make a brush alright so let me change this other camera so that you can see what's going on on top here go to this we have the hook loaded up and we've got our thread on and it it just simply droops on the far end of this uh, little table that we have. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this stuff right here. Uh, what I've done is I have, I bought a bunch of this stuff here. This is called Kanklon and it spins better than any material that I have used out there. I mean, you can use the EP fibers and that sort of thing, but they get tangled up and it's kind of hard to brush them out. This stuff brushes out really nice and it flows really nice in the water because it's essentially it's hair. It's a synthetic hair, but it does a really good job with the uh, with the motion that you want to get on a fly as you're retrieving it. So 
what I do is I cut that stuff down and I fit it inside these uh, straws, these tubes. Um, and then I'll, I will do another video on that, on how I do it. But what I can do is with these here, all right, I can cut it down to whatever size I want the brush to be. I mean, this table's a little small, but I can still, you know, make my brushes a little oversized on the table. I can probably get about, I don't know, maybe a, a two-inch brush, so a four-inch strip of material. But this right here... Um, is about is about two and a half inches and we're just going to take a little bit out and put it on the um, on this table here and so what's really nice is it keeps your materials together and what I'm going to do is just lay down some material right here and I'll tell you uh, the the less you use the better the uh, brush is going to turn out. It's not less is more, the le less is better. Please, please understand that. A lot of, I think a lot of people hear less is more, meaning they think it means, well, less means I, I need to use more. And that's kind of confusing, at least I think it is for a lot of guys. Uh, so if we would be more uh, deliberate as to what we're explaining to these guys, if you want to use less, say use less, less is better, less is never more. Um, so that's just my thought on that as I'm laying this uh, material down on top of this table across here and there you, that's a better view of it and it's right there now this is the first time I've ever done this so I don't even know if this is going to work to be quite honest with you but we're about to find out um, it, we're about to find out so there's there it is and if you have to, you can kind of fill in places that have a little bit of gap, okay? And now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your spinner, your frother that's been turned into a dubbing sp spinner, and then grab your uh, thread, bring it across, and tie it in, all right? And then what you can do is turn it on, and you, and you can gauge your uh, speeds right here, all right? Just get it so that it doesn't fall on you. Keep the tension on it. Pull it out. Drop it down. Pull it out. And then you can just go ahead and rip it out the rest of the way. Okay, so... Makes a pretty nice looking brush there, I would say. Spin it up a little bit tighter if you want to. And what's really kind of nice about this is you can take a pair of um, hemostats and grab the end here so it doesn't unspin on you. Then you can take, if, if you've got a little bit of a gap here where between the hook and the table, all you need to do is grab it and run it back to where it needs to be, to where it meets the bend of the hook. Now you've got a nice brush right there where you can just take it and spin it on. And then as you put it on, you just go ahead and just keep on spinning it. And then I'll take my bodkin and kind of pull out some of that stuff there. Maybe even kind of... And just keep doing wraps, touching wraps. And it's probably going to turn out pretty darn good, because that's what it looks like. You might have to keep, just like you would any brush, when you do your brushes, you might have to keep pulling out the material. Actually, 
less is better, like we did here. Just using less, less material, puts on a really nice uh, tail on this fly. And we'll go ahead and, and what is really nice about this technique right here is you can use your scissors and not have to worry about tearing them up by cutting a by cutting through a piece of wire and this is all the waste that you'd have all right so you just throw that away you know, whereas when you do the bigger brushes not only are you fighting it trying to put it around um, you are going to have a lot of extra and a lot of waste there actually that with a little bit of you saw the little bit of material I laid down on that table and that's still to be quite honest with you that's still that still put um, put quite a bit of material in there anyway this is Mike I know I'm going to be doing some more videos to follow up on this of actually making flies with it um, but I'm going to throw this out there. If, if you uh, would, please like and subscribe for one. But if you would, if you're interested, uh, I'll take the most popular, <clears throat> I'll take the most popular suggestion and, uh, and I'll start making things that you guys come up with. And if I, if I select your item, and, and, but the thing is, uh, I'll have to, what I'm, the, the first person that gives me the idea, if you can follow me here, the first person that gives me an idea for something to design and make on the 3D printers that is fly tying or fishing related, um, after I'm done making it, I'll send it to you absolutely free. Uh, uh, it won't cost you anything. Uh, you know, there there will be some limits to that. I mean, I'm not going to make something that's going to cost me three hundred dollars to put together. But if I can put it together with some hardware and materials that I have laying around here, um, it'll be free. If it's something, and I'll let you know. Uh, if it's something I need to buy, I'll let you know how much the materials are going to be. And if you do get chosen to get the i to get the item that I design for you. Um, you, you'll still just, the only thing you'd have to pay for is the new materials that I have to buy to make it. Um, and that's, I, I think that's a pretty good deal. So, uh, again, if you, uh, find this, uh, type of stuff interesting and, and, uh, if you would please, uh, give me a hand at being able to produce more of these, subscribe. Uh, like the video and comment. Give me your comment on what you would like to have made and let's see if we can get this going. Just give me a challenge. Maybe we can do the challenges often and, and you might get something free out of it. Who knows? Till the next video, this is Mike. See ya.